<laughs> wow, sure has been a while, hasn't it? I said that we're reviewing all the Devil May Cry games, so that's what we're doing here at Four Swords Gaming, so let's go on to the next installment. I like to think that the designers over at Capcom have major ambitions for Devil May Cry 4. You see it everywhere. The ambition, the passion, the artistry that's marred by corporate bigwig mentality. I won't mince words when it comes to this thesis. I love this game, but... God damn it, fuck corporations. I'll elaborate more on that later, but I just have to preface this in this thesis that Devil May Cry 4 is a game full of untapped potential. And let's just say that untapped potential wasn't due to developer negligence. So what's this game like? Devil May Cry 4 set out to be bigger than its predecessor, while at the same time whittled the bloated exploration mechanics to have them take more of a backseat to the visceral combat and raw player input of the last game, which... Kudos, that's a great decision, and the structure of the game definitely benefits from it. This game is nowhere near as brutal as the last, with checkpoints right off the bat in the non-special edition, and enemies that are less punishing, but I think the big factor in why this is so comes from the mechanics of the game itself. Devil May Cry 4 is... It's just insane. You can do insane shit now because not only is Dante fully upgraded to the breaking point with his mechanics as a demon hunter, being incredibly versatile with having the ability to swap between his four styles on the fly with the push of a button leading to some just insane shit. But now we have Nero, an angsty kid with a demon arm and a sword with a motorcycle rev. Nero isn't as versatile as Dante, but I think he's so fun to play as because of his simplicity. It's kind of like Devil May Cry 1 Dante, right? This character only has two weapons and a devil arm, but in the end, that's all he needs. His arm can brutalize the fuck out of literally anything, including boss fights. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. What about that plot, though? Devil May Cry 4 is kind of confusing, and I'll elaborate on that in a sec, but the cutscenes are just a joy to watch. Essentially, big evil religion wants to take over the world using the evil demon powers, and they're disguising themselves as lawful good and junk, like... You've seen this archetype thousands of times. It spawns good characters like Nero, who doesn't quite get to flourish in this game, but more on that later. Can we just talk about how good this game feels to play? It's genuinely one of the most visceral and heated action games I've ever played. The limits of this game are through the fucking roof. Really, the only limits of the combat are your own dexterity. The game doesn't hold your hand, however. You have the tools, now go kick ass. Those are my favorite types of video games. However, sadly, I know those aren't everyone's cup of tea. But honestly, if I just want to go out and kick some ass, I don't turn on Devil May Cry 3. I turn on 4. And, spoiler warning for this essay, while I do think 3 is the better game, there's no denying that this game has an easier pick up and play vibe to the average Devil May Cry fan. Sadly, this is where the script takes a spiral in terms of the quality of the game. I always describe this game as a Devil May Cry fan's Devil May Cry game, and pretty much nothing else. Time for a gaming history lesson with Uncle FSG. Devil May Cry 4 was an ambitious project to its development team, but to Capcom it was a paycheck and nothing more. So they rushed it, causing a lot of content to take a backseat as they literally folded the game in half to make a full game to meet deadlines. This is where the fuck corporations message comes in because you can definitely see it in the game. Like the game just hard swaps to Dante halfway through and it's extremely jarring. The first half you went through as Nero going through his environments becomes Dante's half going through the same environments. This is why the plot is also so confusing. It isn't finished. And that pretty much sums up my feelings on this game as a whole. Devil May Cry 4 is an extremely polished game with outstanding combat, cutscenes, character, and charm, yet it's only half of an experience. Whereas DMC3 felt like a full game with a complete character and style, hence why I prefer it. You know what this game feels like? It feels like one of those freeware fan games that exist to emulate the mechanics of the source material so people don't have to pay for the real thing, like Pokemon Showdown. Like, it's good, but it isn't what it's trying to be because it just simply, because of the circumstances of its development, didn't have the time to bloom become what it wanted to be. Which sucks because you could see it trying. You could see the untapped potential lurking in this product. Like, I know you're trying, damn it, just try a bit harder! Anyways, let's bring this to a close. Devil May Cry 4 is a great game, but I feel like you'd only appreciate it as a Devil May Cry fan. For a casual consumer, I'd say, for a complete DMC experience, play 3. Or 5, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. I'll briefly talk about Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, which is what I played for this review. I mean, it looks pretty, they added new characters, and is definitely the definitive DMC4 experience, but damn it doesn't feel like a waste of potential. Like, they could have finished the game, added what was cut, and could have fleshed out the game into what it was supposed to be all those years ago. But no, we got better graphics, and more characters, and an already oversaturated setting. But that potential would be unleashed. It would not come out as the special edition, but as a sequel reboot. 
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, and I give Don't Make Cry 4 an underbaked cookie out of 10. Thanks for watching. Bye!